It's finally spring, there's some blue skies. We're into March, so I wanted to put a little video together to hopefully inspire you to film your own flights with audio and I want to show you how I do that, the process of what I plug in where and where the cameras go and then we'll jump back into my office, my editing, it's not an editing suite, it's a spare bedroom and then we'll go through the process of exactly how I put a video together and hopefully it'll give you some inspiration for this summer. So I've just got a third camera. It is a GoPro, it was used off eBay for 150 quid or something like that. It's a GoPro Hero 6. On the Eurostar, it sits, you'll see it in the last video, I'll put a link in the top right now. It sits really nice behind the two passengers and you get a nice wide angle view there. I've also attached the camera to the front of the canopy to give us a second angle, just to make it a little bit more interesting when we're flying along. I've had lots of requests on physically how I plug everything in with my audio recording kit. So first off, we start here. Again, I've done a video and I'll link that in the top right of exactly what cables I use, which Rory on Air advised and they're perfect. It's a splitter cable into the larger jack. That splitter cable comes down here and then we run into a smaller jack. That runs into this minus 40 decibel uh, noise attenuator, which really helps keep the quality in the audio and then that is just again that size a three millimeter jack 3.5 into 3.5 into my audio recording kit as far as the headset goes the smaller jack plugs into the plane as normal and the other goes into the splitter cable so hopefully that all makes a lot of sense for you there <laughs> and obviously the key is to remember to turn it on and record it <laughs> Okay, so before we set off, it's really key when you're recording, and this is the most obvious thing, but just press record, get your cameras going. It's so easy to not do it, isn't it? You know as a photographer as yeah. well, little things, leaving your lens cap on, yeah. all that silly yeah. stuff. all that good stuff. So make sure and double check, but then I like to do what's called set and forget. Literally forget the cameras are even on and just enjoy your flight and do it safely. So that is now recording, that's recording. Haven't got the head cam today, but I love the head cam and I'll just make a call. Golf Fox or Zulu is ready for departure, Charlie 1. Golf Fox or Zulu via Charlie 1, runway 26, report lined up. Welcome to my editing suite, as you can see, my various radio controlled planes and helicopters and drones and all that geeky stuff I used to do and still love. But this is all about editing. And editing is so important. And editing is so important. So often on YouTube, you see people who have chucked together their flying because they want to watch it back and stuff, which is great. I mean, it's really valuable, but they have done no editing and they've got the entire flight. And for everyone else who wants to watch that, because it might be an interesting bit of content, but it's just too long. There's not enough interest to keep the viewer hooked to the video. And whilst I'm no expert on flying, or editing video, I do know a thing or two about content. I'm a radio presenter and my show is all about getting content together that will be interesting for our demographic audience. And this is a bit like YouTube. Hopefully you're watching this thinking, yeah, I want to put some videos together, but importantly, edit them so they're actually a little bit more interesting and hopefully we can get some views on YouTube, right? So where do we start? Well, the first thing you need to do, of course, is take the footage that you've got from your GoPro or your action camera or whatever and get it onto your computer. I mean, it's obvious. And then open it up into some editing software and that could be free software with whatever computer you wanna use. And there are several videos on the best video free editing software you can get. I'm using iMovie because it's free with Macs. I do actually use Final Cut when I'm putting the full videos together, but I think that's a little bit more complicated, so I'm not gonna to touch that today. Let's start basic. And we'll end up with something like this. I think it's easier if I share my screen with you now. You will have all your footage at the top and what you have are all your clips. So let's say we have a two camera angle setup. You've got a GoPro and a Yee action cam like I did for this flight. Well, then you're gonna import all your footage, okay? On iMovie, the little orange bar at the bottom means you are using your clip in the actual main timeline at the bottom here. So I've dragged in every GoPro video in order, which is a little bit time consuming, but you'll understand which comes first because you're on the ground and which comes last because hopefully you're on the ground again and put them in order, okay? Next up, we want to minimize the audio and I mean literally take it to zero from your camera, okay? So 
you don't really want audio that you don't need from the engine or anything that you can hear or air, just air passing over the airframe is quite noisy. So we minimize all of that. So we've got no audio coming from our video clips. We are, however, using the audio from the separate audio recorder. And this is where it gets a little bit more complicated if you're not plugging straight in to the GoPro. And if you are doing that, the audio is already synced and it's very easy. You can almost skip to the next step. However, if you are using my method, it gets a little bit more complicated, like I said, because we need to sync the audio with the video. And let me show you how you do that. And whilst yes, the most obvious and easiest way is to go one, two, three at the start of your video, and you can find the clap in the audio because it's a nice spike in the waveform, or actually you forget it like I have, which is quite a good thing for me to show you how you can save it. It's not all lost. We're gonna find a part where I know I can sync up with. So there's a point in this video where I look back, let me mute that. There's a point in this video where I look back at the GoPro and I say, that's recording because I check it. Okay, so visually, I can see that that is this moment. I can say that that's there. And I'm looking for the audio to match it. So let me just turn this up so you can hopefully hear it as well. Just enjoy your flight and do it safely. So that is now recording 320. Perfect, so that is in sync. And now with the rest of the flight, that the whole thing is in sync. But of course we've done no editing. We've got one hour flight here, pretty much bang on to the, to the minute there, a one hour flight, but no one wants to watch that. So let's get editing. So at this point, if you've just used one camera, it's fine. You can go in and chop and splice and whatever. It's important, of course, that you always highlight both the audio and the video if you're gonna make a cut. And by that, I mean an edit of something you want to take out, you want to splice through the audio and video. Otherwise, you're going to end up audio that's longer than your video because you didn't cut that bit out. That's fine. But let's go a little bit more complicated. We're going to add a second camera angle. So let's find the first bit from the Yi. So that's here. We're on the ground. So that's the first clip. They are longer clips in the Yi. And I'm going to drag it to the start of the audio. That is all. So we're going to zoom in a little bit. That probably isn't a million miles off because I know I recorded and started doing my video straight away. As you can see, there's far too much audio coming from the camera. So we're gonna mute that again. And let's see if we can sync up. So there's a point where I'll start talking to the camera. There we go. I'm gonna make a cut, which on this is Command and B, but it might differ for your software. I'm gonna drag this now to the start of the audio. So we went a million miles off, you know. There we go. And let's have a listen. Okay, so before we set off, it's really- So you can see that that's not quite in sync. I'm saying okay there. So let's go to the, the bit further. Okay, so before we set off, it's really- Perfect. So that is the how I sync my audio and my video, which is our next stage. So let's jump back in and we're gonna drag the other clips from the Yi. So still in the air and still in the air. So that must be the middle clip. It didn't land away anywhere. So minimize the audio again, especially off this camera because it's, it's noisier. Let's just check that they are what I would call butted up to each other. Let's butt that up to there. But of course that also means I've got to do this one. So let's just zoom in a little bit and do that. So now we should see that the audio is in sync right at the end of the video as well. And then like that, thanks for being calm. There we go. So that's in sync. And that almost is the hardest bit of this whole process. What's the first interesting bit of a flight? Often, let's just start with the takeoff. So we'll dive back in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut everything off before the takeoff. It's nice and easy to find where that is, of course. Right, well, that's quite a nice start point for the video. So let's highlight all three clips. Then we go Command B, where our cursor is, and delete everything for it. Okay, so that's fine. You're thinking, yeah, but what about the two camera angles? Well, I'll show you how to do that as well. So this GoPro, the forward-facing GoPro, is our main angle. A secondary angle facing me and Rich is there. So let's say we want it pointing at me whilst I'm talking. Fine. Cool. So at the end of me talking, let's cut that and we'll drag the rest of that clip. There we go. A bit fiddly. Right. Okay. So that will now automatically cut between cameras. Please line up and ready for the 
Okay, fine. So what we could actually do is make him speak straight away. Again, saving people's time and all that. So let's cut there. And let's cut there. And let's chop that out. And this isn't going to look like I've done an edit, but he's going to suddenly speak straight away to me. It's little things like that that make a massive difference to a video. You're not waiting for the controller. It's punchier. It's tighter. And honestly, it'll improve your video hugely. Just doing simple things like that. So essentially, it really is as simple as that editing. You're kind of just trying to get rid of the boring stuff or the gaps or stuff that just doesn't add to the story. The process you need to go through now, which is the long process, of course, but it's not hard, is go through your entire flight and edit out anything that you don't want in there. And it could be as simple as just a boring bit of, of video. I'm smiling. We're having a nice time. Rich is taking photos, but nothing's going on. So you can edit that out. Let me show you a couple of ways. If you've got two cameras, you can actually, again, you can kind of make it seem like you're not even editing. Um, so let's say we want... So let's say we want to cut from there. After I speak, you can kind of see. So command B, and that splices through there. And this is all boring, and we want to get to the next bit where I speak. Okay, so you can physically see where I speak because of the waveform there. Okay, so all of this I want to get rid of. There's two ways we can do that. Highlight the whole clip. Split it. And delete. And then cut from camera to camera. So it will look like this. Leaving the circuit to the south box up Okay, so as we leave the circuit, we do it. So I've cut all of that stuff out and I've just switched between cameras at different times to make it look like I've not chopped anything out. So that's one way. Let me undo that. So we've still got all of that. Once again, we would still want to get rid of this. If you're only operating on a one camera system, you might want to make your edit so that stuff's still gone, that footage is still gone, but you may want to add a transition. So if you go up to the top here and click transitions, Something like, I, I like to use a cross blur, but you can use whatever you want. Let's say cross blur, you drag it in between the two. You can actually alter the time. 0.5 is quite nice, it's quite quick. So let's just watch that. Happen. Okay, so as we leave. Kind of gives the viewer the idea that you have skipped some footage out. It's quite nice. So when you're recording your flying footage, obviously you've got your single camera. If you want to just use one camera, that's absolutely fine. You can use a second as well. That's always going to add to the interest of the video, whatever it is, and especially a flying video. But then on top of that, you can actually record B-roll or cutaway shots or whatever you want to call it. You can record extra footage with a phone or something else, just like Rich is doing here. And that just adds another element of interest, often a different angle or of something else. The two cameras aren't going to be shooting outside the plane, they're shooting at us and forward. So Rich is getting some shots of these beautiful fluffy clouds that we're just playing around with today at 90 mile an hour above them. If I was wearing my head cam, this is the kind of footage that that would get, but it's a wide angle, so you don't quite get the same feeling as when it's a better quality, sort of more zoomed in angle that you'd get on the iPhone 11. So once you've got your video edited and you've got all the bits out that you want it to be, and maybe that one hour flight is now just 13 minutes and it's got all the interesting stuff in it that will make a fantastic YouTube video. And if you start doing this, comment below because I want to subscribe to your channel. Then what you need to do is go through and just make the, the, the video look a little crisper, a little brighter maybe if it's a dull day. This day happened to be really sunny, but let me just show you on iMovie how easy color correction is. Color grading is really complicated in something like Final Cut Pro. You wanna go through all the histograms and the graphs and the charts and the color wheels and stuff like that. You don't need to, it's as simple as anything on iMovie. This little button up here, sorry, this little button up here, you can literally add a bit of warmth Look at that saturation coming through now. Lovely. And then what I generally do is just cool it down a bit. So up on the 
saturation and then the I just cool it down a touch. And then you can see the difference between there, look a little bit washed out, a little bit poorly almost, and then there, just look, everything that looks a little more alive. And it just seems a bit more real, seems like it really happened. In terms of the other camera angle, it's difficult when you're pointing at the sun, for example, but let's have a look again. Let's just add some saturation. Look at that blue sky pop. Just cool it down a touch, maybe a bit too saturated there. But then suddenly, suddenly it looks a much more polished product. So add some color grading of some sort, and then you actually have a really decent looking video. In terms of adding a voiceover to your video, once the whole thing is finished, you can add some detail about who your passenger is or about what your flight is gonna be about. Then you can add it via your Zoom that you record your cockpit audio with if you wanted to. You can do this as the last step almost. You could add it with your phone. If you've got a voice memo on your iPhone, that's just as good. It's essentially the same as recording a video and using the audio from that. Of course, it's just a smaller file. And let me show you the quality you get with something like this. I can switch it over. So now we're using the audio from the Zoom H1N, which is a fantastic bit of kit. You can see I've pressed record. I've got the audio setting to about right. You want it on about minus 12 decibels that it peaks at. So you've got plenty of room above and below in post-production to alter the volume of this. And a couple of tips if you are going to add voiceovers to your videos. Speak slowly. Speak really slowly. It doesn't sound unnatural if you pause a bit it's absolutely fine it sounds really unnatural if you rush all your words and try and spit them out really quickly which is a common thing speak clearly speak slowly not overly loud you don't need to shout but also know what you want to say even a little bit of context for the viewer at the start of a video is fantastic today we're practicing stalls with my instructor david young it's a crosswind of five knots on the runway so our takeoff was a bit interesting and make sure you watch the end because the landing was terrible even that little bit of context uh, you know it makes you want to watch the rest of the video you want to get people to watch it now and i always find it super important to have one point this is the same as in radio when we talk we have one thing we talk about we don't talk about a load of different things in the same talky bit on air same link we call it it's the same with videos as far as i'm aware you know the past year i've got a good idea of what people like what people don't like you'd certainly need a one thing that the video is about. Circuits today in the C-42, stalls in the Eurostar, worst ever landing. You know, that's much more interesting than a flight from Kemble to Compton Abbas. Why is the flight interesting? Well, I had to use no brakes at Compton Abbas, so that was the hook. I tried to get people interested in that. So have a think about that. Then you can get a bit more experimental with introductions and graphics and all cool stuff like that. But honestly, that, is the kind of crux of it, really. Before I wrap this up, if you really fancy getting some cool videos together and getting them onto YouTube, the best way to get inspiration is to watch a load of other channels. And some of my favorites include Rory on Air. I've met up with Rory. He's got a load of great microlight videos and he's just started training for his helicopter license, which is very cool. And he's smashing that. And that's a very similar story to the micro pilot as well. Plain old Ben is absolutely awesome. The variety of training and different planes he's flown with in his training is absolutely amazing. Though, of course, a very special mention to Ben and anyone who's affected by Flybe's collapse. Very sad time in aviation, but I've no doubt he'll be absolutely fine. So it's well worth subbing to Ben's channel. The Flying Reporter, well, John is fantastic. He's a great host of the channel with a huge variety of videos and very factual content at times. And that is excellent. Helped me learn loads and still does. And there's Tim, who operates Jodel Flyer, a fantastic channel. Honestly, very content. It changes every single time. It's not repetitive. Great little airstrip he operates out of uh, on the East Coast with a slope. It looks very fun. Jolma is from Holland and runs for Fun Fly, which is an awesome channel with his new TL-96 aircraft. Certainly worth subbing, especially if you like the sort of technical side. His videos are very high quality as well. Others include Learning to Fly with Matt, who's going through his training in a microlight as well. And a mate called Nick has just created a channel called Let's Go Flying. So definitely sub to that. He owns a Eurostar, so it's worth doing that if you're an EV97 fan. All the links to these channels are in the description below. But next time, you're going to see the flight I used to put this video together, which involved the bumpiest final approach I had so far. Here's a little teaser. Landing. Go for Click subscribe then. Make sure you don't miss it. 
Thanks so much for watching. Coffee and kiosk. The traffic information is a PA28 also inbound right. for yep. the overhead. Yeah, I'm fine. I just, just want to concentrate now. Coffee and kiosk. Oscar. Traffic information is a C42 inbound for the overhead. Roger, traffic. Coffee and Oscar. Uh, that, that really fun, but I've never had a landing like that. Thanks for being calm. <laughs>